Hey guys, it's uh, Iggy, and we're not really doing so much a figure review as we are looking at a bunch of figures. This is more of an appreciation video for NECA. Uh, now, some of you who don't know what that stands for, it is National Entertainment Collectors Association. But everyone calls them NECA for short. <laughs> and um, they're just really good. Uh, this isn't just figures-wise. This is also the way they handle customer service. Uh, now, there has been a few bit of controversy lately with the S with the San Diego Comic-Con figures not being sold at Toys R Us or Personally, that doesn't affect me because, well, some of the ones they sell, I don't really get. Uh, I mean, you know, they've done a cloaked scar. I already have a scar figure, so I don't need to get multiple scars just because I only really want one scar, one of each character. And the new figure is good, but... I'm not really, like, I don't have the room on my shelf for the Colonial Marines. I don't even have any of the Xenomorphs they have. My biggest, the biggest thing I collect from them is Predators. Just because they do it so well. I'm a big fan of their Predator line. I have other figures as well, don't get me wrong. So, what we're going to do is we're going to start off by looking at their um, figures from my oldest to my uh, newest ones. Now, oldest, it doesn't mean how long I've old them. Oh, left two over there. Oh, yeah, I can't forget those two. Uh, sorry, uh, now this means which ones are the oldest, not the ones I've had the longest, the ones which are oldest. <laughs> so I might be getting a bit mis mix up here because I don't know which ones came out where. So the first one we have is, when was this made? 2006 was NECA Davy Jones. Um, he was a good figure. He had, he, he didn't have much articulation, you got a head swivel, pin and socket shoulders, which didn't really move all that well, uh, that's a bit loose, a swivel wrist, a claw movement, a waist cut and a foot cut, even though he didn't have much articulation, he, he still looks really good, the sculpt team managed to capture him exactly, uh, this, this is how I got mine, and I've had the claw broke off so I had to repair it, but I managed to make it still move, um... Again, it doesn't come with his hat. I got this guy secondhand from a car boot. Uh, so that's pretty much him. And if you lift this up in the back, the copyright is very, very well hidden under there. On his ass, So you can't really see it. So that's pretty good. Uh, next is the... Um, where is it? Where is it? It's buried in the good here. Let's see. When was this made? It does not say. Next we have is the Resident Evil Crimson Head. And if you're wondering why mine looks a bit bleached, that's because I boiled him in hot water to try and um, clean him off because he got some muck on him. Because uh, when I was doing Hunters vs. Slashers, I put fake blood on him and it kind of stained him. So he's a bit lighter in colour. But if anything, it kind of makes it a little bit easy to see some of the detail. Uh, still, not bad. You get a ball jointed head, pin and socket shoulders. These pin and sockets are a lot better and they are grey plastic as opposed to whatever plastic Davy Jones had, which I know it was not clear because it was clear it would have shattered instantly. You're going to cut at the wrist, cut at the waist. I wouldn't do this too much because you will pop it off. I had that problem. And that's it. He does need to stand to stand, unfortunately. He will not stand without it. See, if I pop him on any flat surface, because of the way his feet are, he, he, he just topples forward. And that's a bit of a shame, but back then, Necker weren't, you know. They were just getting the kinks with articulation. Uh, you could say they were like beginners, in a way. Next we have is another one from Resident Evil. Also 2007, was the Licker. Not a bad figure, actually. But his posability is pretty bad. Um, now, most of it's cut... In fact, all of it is pretty much cut joints, which isn't a problem because he's an older figure. However, I would have liked some more cut joints. Now, you wouldn't actually hear me say that because, personally, I don't really like cut joints. They're... But still, this guy could do with some more. Now, I don't know what he... I think he has a ball joint in his torso because it can move more than just a swivel. I would like to cut joint in the head and maybe a cut joint in the shoulders or a pin and socket in the shoulders like the crimson head. So he has a cut joint here, which is so rubbery you can pop it off. And that makes sense because this is a very rubbery claw. So that's pretty much the cut joint. It's a mushroom cap. Um, the other one, however, is very, very tough. Very hard and I can't really free it up. This guy also got the boiling water treatment, so he's a bit bleached. He has a cut joint in his upper thighs and his torso can I think it's on a ball joint I'm not too sure but his head because it's on a ball joint and his tail is on a bendy wire so not his tail his tongue also Davy Jones's long tentacle finger is also on a bendy wire so you know that's pretty cool they were using bendy wires back then which is pretty good 
Next, we come to my first collectible figure, and my first, my, this is my first ever collector's figure. Back in 2008, um, this is the first one I ever got. All the others were bought after. So he's in the most beat up condition. It is NECA AVP Wolf. I actually really like this figure, and if NECA do really, really remake him, I'm probably not going to get that version. Not because I won't like it, but from the same principle, I already have a wolf in my collection, and I really don't want to replace this guy because he is very special to me. He was my first ever collectible figure, as well as my first NECA figure. Also, I um, have a dog on my bed. <laughs> uh, but still, he was my first NECA figure, my first ever, so he really is special to me. His articulation, it says on a ball joint, I have cut away some plastic just to kind of, you know, enable him to have some more movement in there. Oh, it's a double ball joint, I think. I'm not sure. No, it's just a simple pin and socket, a uh, uh, pin ball peg. I'm not sure. But he has a ball joint in the head, pin and socket shoulders, both of them. They work quite nice, actually. Cut of the elbow. Now, this wrist is broken, so it won't move, but the other one will, as you could swap it for an alternate one splayed out, but I've lost that one. He has a V-cut of the thigh, a cut, sorry, a V-cut in the crotch, a cut of the thigh, and a single bend in the knee, which is quite nice, as it shows the actual knee there and disguises the joint, and a cut on the, um, a cut joint on the foot. And I have just broken one of his blades. Uh, yes, this figure had very brittle blades, and that, to be honest, is more my fault, because I broke them a while back, this is not Necker's fault, and he's an old figure. He's, yeah, he's, he's very old. Uh, but still, he also has a little gimmick where you can take this off, and uh, this is broken as well, so what I did was, um, it also comes with a detachable cleaner kit, or med pack. So what I did was I, you know, left that piece in there, I put glued a nail on it, and this just pegs in there and it actually clips in you can hear it clip in in person so now he has a plasma caster that's pretty cool uh just give me a sec to where's my glue there we go. i'm gonna fix his blade now now this is the stuff i use this is a little bit of advice on fixing neck figures use this stuff loctite super glue it's very nice and very good quality glue <laughs> so you've got a broken blade don't apply it to the inside apply it on the actual blade itself And then just, it's not going to work very well. Oh dear, this is going to be very difficult. Uh, oh dear, this is uh, this is not going to be easy, is it? I also lost the main cap for his arm, so I glued some blocks of resin in place. And they, they've done their job well. They're the only things that haven't broken, surprisingly. So just make that level with that. There we go. So that's how you fix some blades. There we go. I'm going to pop him over here just to dry. He's right next to the camera. Right there. See? Right. Right there. Uh, I've got the camera on self mode at the moment. And... Basically, yeah. So we're just gonna shuffle, shuffle everything to the side. Uh, and then they uh, started to move on to more articulated figures. This is where the articulation got a major overhaul. Still used a few similar techniques to Wolf, but it got an overhaul. Now we're gonna look at Mr. Black first, and he is unfortunately broken. Now this was not Necker's fault because he actually had good quality plastic. This was my fault. Well, actually, no, it was inadvertently my fault because I placed him on a shelf in the pose and. It was that shelf there, this one right here, it was a while back, and he fell off and broke. He fell off and broke, um, which was kind of stupid. Benji, will you stop moving around? Bloody dog, will you stop sprawling out? <laughs> Bloody dog in my bed. Uh, so this is Mr. Black, his knee is very wobbly, I had to pin it in and uh, put pins in there. <laughs> He was my favourite. He is... I do like him. He was my first Predators figure that I got from a local film f comic shop. Well, film sh figure shop, actually. They sell figures and DVDs uh, local to where I live. Now, he had a detachable blade. So you could have him without it. And like all, like all, just like uh, Tracker, which I don't have, sadly, and Falconer, you can interchange blades. 
Uh, one thing I would recommend with these blades is put a bit of super glue in the tab and wait for it to dry because these blades are very loose when you get them. I had that problem and they were constantly falling out. Luckily, I didn't lose them. <laughs> and they're constantly falling out and it was a pain. Uh, so for articulation, his cannon can go up and down and rotate, and the barrel also spins, which is very nice. His head is on the ball joint. His arms are on pin and sockets. Uh, his elbows bend and rotate. His waist is on a cut. His crotch has a V-cut. His thighs have a cut. His knees can bend and rotate as well on that joint. And the feet are on ball joints, but they function more like swivels just because of just high boot piece. Uh, so that's him. We also have... Falconer, who I did a bit of tweaking to. Now, he usually comes with these black straps. I replaced the ones here with, with elastic bands because, unfortunately, those black ones were severely hampering his movement, and I wanted to be able to get his leg kicking out quite far. So they stretch out, and you can now get him into some pretty crazy poses. I think what a lot of people's problem with Falconer was is um, he didn't come with his falcon. That was later remedied with a special release... Uh, but it's, it's just a shame, really, and it was retooled to have a hole in. Now, he does use... He, um, he is a reuse of parts, pretty much. Him and Mr. Black share the same body with new armour. Well, well, different, different, little bits of different tweaks in the armour. But then again, that's kind of logical, because predators are all biologically the same. They all biologically have the same body, like humans. They're all, they're all from the same race, so it kind of makes sense. Also, he's different colours, and he has a new arm. His, uh, his new arm here is tool, but pretty much everything else is the same, except the hands are slightly different. Uh, so he's pretty good. But actually, no, he does have... This hand is pretty much the same. <laughs> and then we come on to... Uh, after that, we come on to more articulated predators, which I have two. Uh, this one here, he was... Uh, he, I tried to mod him, and I might try it again, but it didn't work very well, so he does look a little different, but you can barely tell at first glance. It is the Battle Armor Lost Predator or Borg Predator. Now, if you were to look on this arm, there's a little line right there. I tried to cut that to give him a bicep swivel and I was going to give him double-jointed elbows. It didn't work. But to be honest, you can barely tell it's there. And I did use a hot water technique to pop all his joints off. I sliced this cable away a while back when I first got him to give him more room to bend his elbow at 90 degree. For sword poses, he's going to need it to wield swords, but I do think double joints would benefit him. But he's an older figure, so you know. He does have a ball jointed cannon. Two ball joints here and here. Nice cannon, actually. Uh, if you were to... God, I don't want to break this. If you were to pop it off, you could have it like this and have him pretend he's holding it like a blaster pistol. So that's pretty cool. Now, I've actually managed to fit it in his hand. I'm not going to demonstrate it now, just because it does take a while to get it in, but I will demonstrate it in his own video. It does fall back... Like that. It marrows up very nicely. He is from the original Lost Predator figure, but he's slightly different. So he's a variant. <sighs> Kalanekka's own design, which is one of the reasons I picked up this guy. Uh, he has a new mask, a uh, plasma caster, and he even comes with a sword, which is very unique for a predator. Predators don't usually come with a sword. I like to think that this red bit is a very hot piece that slices through flashlight butter. So it's a heat blade, I like to think. I don't know, we never saw it in a movie. <laughs> Now, his articulation is very, very similar, in a way, to uh, Falconer and Mr. Black. Falconer and Mr. Black share the same articulation, but this guy's got similar in his upper half of his body. He has a ball-jointed head, pin and socket shoulders, which go forward and back out to the side, bend and rotation at the elbow, ball-jointed wrist. Now, he has, actually has a ball-jointed torso, as you can see. It's not the greatest, but it's okay. It does rotate, though. Here's what's new. Uh, they did this with the Jungle Hunter, and it's it's been a trend now with these ever since. They've got new... Le they had newer leg articulation, which was pin and socket legs. So, form back, out to the side, rotation at the thigh, and a double-jointed knee. That's pretty damn cool. That's pretty damn cool. And you've got a ball-jointed the foot. So, that was good. That was really good. That was... Brilliant, and that can include double joints in their knees. Also, the sword can store in the sheath, which is pretty cool. So that's some functionality to him, which is good. <laughs> then you have a deluxe one. Uh, after that, you know, they made to kept that trend up with the double jointed knees and new leg articulation for several years. And then you had Mr. Black, uh, not Mr. Black, sorry. And then you had Bad Blood, who was a deluxe figure. He was towards the end of this type of predator. Um, 
He's quite unique. I'm, I'm going to customise him so that this blood. I've got a Games Workshop Citadel paint, which is blood from the Blood God. And it's a very glossy blood light paint. And I'm going to use it on him to kind of make him really stand out. Unfortunately, I'm missing the piercing on his eyebrow. I don't even know where it went. Uh, my hand, unfortunately, is glued in place. It does rotate, though, because unfortunately it kept on falling off. And I have no choice. Bit of a shame. I have modified him, actually. Uh, so cut away some plastic here to free up articulation and this case, this little loop was replaced with elastic and the same here because these kept on breaking and these skull hook hooks are glued in place so they won't be coming off this one's not glued in but it's hooked on <laughs> uh, he shares the exact same articulation as um, lost but what I like to do as well now some say this cannot be stored uh, it actually can you have to use your imagination a bit uh, I don't have the enforcer, sadly. What I like to do is I like to kind of hook it in here. It's a little bit... It's not wanting to cooperate today. And just hook it like that. That's slightly inspired from the Yelda Mark II, which I do want to get that figure because it does look really good. And then what you can do is you can have them with his triple wrist blades. Triple wrist blades. We've never had a product with triple blades before. There you go, you can see they are triple, but the one's bending out. I don't know why that is. Uh, but still, they're basically the Predator, Predator 1 blades. And now, for my actual Jungle Hunter figure. This isn't actually Jungle Hunter. Uh, I'll just go grab the box. In fact, I will grab all the boxes. Uh, you know, I said I wasn't, but I will. Just because it's better to. Dump them down here. Probably got a glimpse of one there. Uh, now, this figure's not a minting package, but I will show you the box first. In fact, I'll get you off. Benji, will you stop sprawling on the bed? Honestly. Silly dog. Right. Um, now, this Predator... Come on, Benji, move your paws and squash up. I'm trying to sit here and do a video, you silly mutts. Uh, now, this um, is the 25th anniversary Dark Horse. Now, he has the same problem as... Bad, as um, Bad blood where his wrist is good in place but still rotates. So you've got a window box packaging and I had to glue in the Velcro bits back on this why there's glue smears all over the cover. Because unfortunately it kept on falling off. And you've got some nice comic printing here. And this is a pretty big box. Uh, it was 25 quid. It was a deluxe figure. And this is pretty much what you're getting. What you see is what you get. Uh, he also came in with a reprint of the comic. Um, which was... Pretty cool, actually. I've read this. It's not bad. It's what inspired Predator 2. And at the very back, you get the advertisements for their other toys, the other Predators, including these guys, which took a while to come out. And we'll be getting to them. We will be getting to them. So here he is. Now, he has had a few problems, uh, mainly my copy. Here he is. Uh, his staff snaps in two, but it came off at a glue joint, so I just glued it back on. His wrist blade... This one snapped, uh, his backpack tube came off, his tubes kept on coming off and all that. And his cannon's glued on and it does not hinge back because the hinge broke. I'm very heavy handed unfortunately, but it still rotates in this ball joint. Uh, his knees are uh, the same, even though they look a little different, they do work the same, it's just different tooling. His staff can come out of his hand, it's just the right pain to do so, and his fingers have broken again. Lord, now I wish this hand is not very flexible to get the staff into. It's a bit of an ordeal. God's sake, I shouldn't be having to do repairs on these figures. Uh, his hand snapped off uh, here, so it just rotates. It wasn't even on the ball joint. And this hand rotates as well. So he kind of has pinned hands in a way. <laughs> I did do a bit of a customization on him. I did paint this because it was painted flesh and I wanted to make it tie in with the box. Because the box has it painted right there and I painted it there just to kind of tie it in. He is a good figure though. His blades are grey, which is appropriate for a comic figure. Uh, so I will just put him down. And then this one I got all the way from Italy and he has a duplicate accessory which I made personally and his hand has just popped off. It's on the ball joint, don't worry. Um, I made this accessory that, I, that, he, that he has out of pewter. I casted it from in college uh, just as a display option. So here's the figure, Wasp. And I, I got him because I fell in love with his colour scheme and his design. He has, then this is not, um, this elastic band here is just a storage band oiler. 
This one, however, is a full-on mod. It enables his arms to go all the way up and it just stretches. But the elbow one, that's fine as it is. Um, but actually, he's not... No, I don't... No, he does have a little bit of a mod there so that his elbow can bend there a bit better like that. Uh, he says exact same articulation, but instead of having a ball joint, him and Dark Horse, which is this one I nicknamed Dark Horse because I don't really have a name, have a cut joint at the waist. Uh, which, you know, fair enough, I guess. Now, he comes with two accessories. One of them I made. So here is the original, the one he actually comes with when you buy him. A Xenomorph impaled on a staff, and this is a fantastic looking sculpt, this is really nice. Now I casted this, sand casted, made one out of pewter, cut away the alien head, and what you're left with is this. This is metal, so... It's a uh, pewter, it's very soft metal. Uh, pretty, very similar, blade slightly differs at the tip, but um... It's meant to be one of these without the head on, so that he, you know, you can have him like that, but I usually just keep it on his back. <laughs> so that's him. Then we come to 2014, where we had a big monster movie come out. We had the remake of Godzilla, which was a fantastic movie. I have it on Blu-ray. So we had quite a few figures tack uh, companies tackle Godzilla, the legendary Gojira. But I, don't, I only think one company actually did it right, which was NECA. SH Monster Arts had good articulation, but their head sculpts on their 2014 Godzilla just looked awful. I, I personally hate it. It, does, it looks nothing like it does in the film. That's where NECA comes in. That looks dead on Godzilla from 2014. Now, this guy has no cut joints at all. Not a single cut joint, uh, which is funny, really. He has a few... He has two pin and socket... Four pin and socket joints, one bendy wire, and everything else is ball-jointed. So he has a hinge at the jaw... Two ball joints at the top of the head and the base of the neck. He has a ball jointed shoulders, pin and socket elbows, ball jointed wrists, ball joint at the torso, ball joint at the thighs, pin and socket knees, bend, uh, what, no, a ball joint at the foot, ball joints here, 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 and here at the tail, and this has to be attached separately, and then a nice bendy wire. That's good, that is good, that is. You can bend it quite far, actually, but I don't usually use it that much, just because I kind of like him with a straight tail. <laughs> also, it's quite meaty here, so it's not easy to bend it. But you do know it's bendy wire, because it's got the holes. So, there we go, and um, I forgot a few others, but we'll get onto them in a minute. And that's Godzilla 2014. Pretty good. Also, the inside of his mouth is nicely detailed, he's a nice figure. Uh, now we go back a bit to 2012 with NECA's release of the Prometheus figures. Uh, they were okay, actually. I only wanted one in particular. I wanted a few, but there was only one I got because it was the one I wanted the most. The Deacon. Um, the Deacon is a good figure, as you can see. He does have a problem, though. His arms are not on pins and sockets, so they can't go forward. They're only on these hinges. I might modify them in the future to have forward and back movement, but I'm a bit wary of that because I don't really like to mod NECA figures that much as things can go wrong. And I've had this guy in my collection for a while. <laughs> he has not really got any major mods except for super glue trick on his knees, but it still doesn't work. That's the, this guy's biggest problem. Yeah, I think we've got to grips with that. Uh, he doesn't even have cut joints either. He uses a lot of ball joints. So it's a ball joint in the head, which really has some ridiculous motion in it. His jaw can hinge here and it can go up like that. Uh, pin socket shoulders, which go like this, they rotate here. So if you wanted to, you could get him pointing forward, but it doesn't really work as well as a full pin socket. Elbows are the same, they hinge and rotate here. Ball joint at the wrist, diaphragm joint. Ball jointed thighs, bend at knee, which bends like a double joint really far back. I'm kind of surprised they engineered that without actually using a double joint. A ball joint to foot. And his problem was um, he needs to stand, to stand up, uh, which is his biggest problem. I do have his accessories, like the hammer peed and the jockey head, but I'm not going to show those just because I simply can't be asked. 
Then we come to Pacific Rim. I only have one figure from this line. I do hope to get some more, maybe the Ultimate um, Strikey Rika and the Ultimate Gypsy Danger. But the one I did got, and I got him secondhand, was Tacit Ronin. Not a bad figure, but mine had a problem. His arm broke, so I had to use some Lego to repair it. And his other arm broke, but I managed to repair that, and it still rotates and hinges. Because unfortunately, this guy has very tight joints, and when I turned this one, it twisted off. And I had to cut all of it open at the back to repair it. He's not a bad figure, though. He has a very nice paint job. Uh, he does have a gimmick. You can slide his blades out once, and then twice. His fang blades, so he is quite nice. <laughs> And here's articulation as follows. Heads on the ball joint. Not the most... It's a bit restricted just because the, the sculpt on the neck part there is quite restrictive. Like that. It doesn't really move that much. You're mainly going to get rotation out of it. Pin and socket shoulders. Forward and back. Out to the side. A rotation at the elbow. They could have put a, they could have put a joint there, actually. I'm, I'm surprised they didn't. Uh, a single bend at the elbow. A... Ball joint the wrist which only rotates, but I took a little tooth out of it so that it can hinge. Might do it with the other one as well at some point. So that's pretty cool. Ball joint the torso, which was very tight at first, so I blasted the guy with the hair dry and it has freed it up so much. Look at that, I can move it really easy. When I first got it, I was like, yeah. Really tight. Two ball joints at the thighs, and some people say they can't go forward. Well, you'd be, you'd have to um you have to persevere. But you do get them moving forward. You get a double jointed knee, which bends here and here. Unfortunately, it's not one of those that curls back uh, very well because of these other pieces. And a dual ball joint system at the foot. A double ball peg. Unfortunately, this snapped on both of them, so I had to cut away on that. And in fact, it's a good job it did because it's freed up the movement, making them a bit easier to move about and all that. So that's pretty cool. Also, you can't get his legs going out to the side. They can, well, they do that, but that's it. <laughs> uh, still, that's him. Then we come to a new thing Necker started doing with Freddy Krueger, which was the Ultimates line. I do have the box. Here it is. The nice window box packaging. Comes with all the stuff on the back. I'll just give you a minute to look at all that. Comes with the contents down there. And you open this box, and you get a nice picture of Freddy Krueger there, and the inside. And this also looks like a sweater. This was the first Nightmare on Elm Street release. <laughs> now doing a part three Freddy. And I do have all of Freddy's accessories, and Freddy is a bit bust as well, but I managed to fix him. So here is Freddy. Pretty cool. Now, unfortunately, he is bust. I had to pin his waist in, and his legs also had to be pinned in. That was my fault. I was heavy-handed, and, you know. So as a result, his legs are a bit floppy. Also cut away some plastic there, and... There, just to free up a bit of movement. I will paint over that at some point. And still, Freddy is good. Just like the original Nightmare on Elm Street release, you can pop his arms off uh, to um, swap them with the old one, which had a uh, long sleeve, which had really long arms, if you wanted to. So it's basically the whole of half is the first release of the figure. What's new is the lower half. Um, a nice glove as well. Very nice glove with funny looking blades. The blades are a bit bent, which is stupid. Uh, you can take his hat off, it's nice and rubbery. The only problem is paint sticks on the inside of the hat. Uh, still, he does come with three heads and all that, and multiple accessories. Uh, his articulation is heads on the ball joint. He has pin and socket shoulders, fall back out to the side. Same with the elbows, they hinge and rotate. Ball joint at the wrist. Uh, two ball joints and torso, one appear in here, so the result is a very, very exaggerated crunch. Pin and socket legs, forward and back. Out to the side, rotate, bend and swivel up the knee, and a ball joint in the foot, which has been slightly modded by cutting a little tooth piece in the back, a little tooth out, in a way. And the result is he can bend his foot a lot further back. So I like to get him in kneeling poses like in Freddy vs. Jason when he got his arm ripped off and all that. <laughs> Speaking of which, the next ultimate figure. Which was my most recent Ultimate figure. I got him a while back though, which was Jason Voorhees. Uh, now he had to be seriously modified. You can't tell what it is, but he had to have a problem. Uh, I'll just show you his box first of all. Love this box, by the way, which is my, probably my favourite Ultimate box. Um, you all sit in the back, comes all stuff down there, nice picture. And then when you open it, it's got a tombstone, a photo of, Freddy Gro of um, Jason Voorhees. So that's pretty cool. 
And uh, also on the top of Freddy, you get a picture of Freddy right there. On the top of Jason, get a picture there. Um, uh, now, Jason had a loose ball joint to the head, and he had loose legs he, and a loose waist. I managed to fix that. His legs are still a bit loose, but I managed to fix them more or less. Uh, his mask has modify is modified so that there's eye holes in it. Uh, I kind of like the fact that you can see his eyes through the mask, so you can see his one eye. Uh, his eye actually has a bit of a paint problem where it's actually got brown on it instead of black, but I think that adds to the look of the deadness. So here is what his mask. Now he has the exact same articulation as Freddy. There's no real difference, so we're not going to go over it. But what he does have is if you pull his arms back. You can pull out these, and I always like to have him hold his knife backhanded like the older Predator. And he has his traditional machete, I'll just stick his mask back on. This is basically part six, Jason. He's the only Jason figure I want, because, you know, I do like this look. And part six is my favourite movie, because he comes back as like a zombie. Uh, so here he is. As you can see, he has the exact same articulation as Freddy Krueger, so we're not going to go over that, because it is it is exactly the same. <laughs> and then we have my other... Now, this is the second ultimate figure. I got Jason with the third, but because, you know, we talk about Freddy vs. Jason, I had to mention it. A second. Uh, we have Leatherface. I got this guy as a substitute for Jason, and I'm quite glad I did, because I watched the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and it was really ridiculous. But it was overall enjoyable, and I liked Leatherface as a character. Oh, this box is a bit dusty. So here it is. Just give you a minute to read on that. Okay, pause it if you want. This is in the back as well as side, the top. 40th anniversary, where there's a th Freddy was a 30th anniversary. So that's pretty cool. Open the box, you get the trophy wall. And you get the little face there. The back shows lots of pictures. On the inventory. So, that's pretty damn cool. <laughs> I have all his accessories complete. Now, I actually stripped the leather face down to see what he was, how he was made. And he's made exactly the same way as Jason and Freddy are. Exactly the same way. <laughs> and his articulation is the same. But here he is. Uh, I think he is the best leather face figure that's ever made. McFarlane's one was shit. Mezco's was... <laughs> this guy was the best. He has a vinyl apron and he also has... Pin and socket legs. He is built exactly the same way, just different sculpt. He, his biggest problem, when you interchange the heads, the peg is so tiny. In fact, that brings us back to Jason and Freddy. Jason did not have an interchangeable heads. His head peg was very loose, and his head, you could pull it off with ease. Freddy, however, his was too tight, and you'd often get marks on your hand from pushing his head on. Uh, still, this guy uh, is the most accurate so far. The bone bracelet, the Texas boots, the nice-looking mask... And his chainsaw, which is going to get a bloody paint job as well. It's got lots of scratches and marks. And this is quite gummy. This handle is quite a gummy plastic. Uh, this is not. This is glued in place because it's kept on falling off and breaking. Uh, but still, his fingers are all separated as well. I, I modified them to do that. Jason, I did it, but then I reversed on his machete hands. And he just wouldn't hold his machete. It was just loose. But still, this guy has exact same articulation as Jason and Freddy. So... Pardon me, we are not going to go over that. But here he is. He is a brilliant looking figure. Very nice sculpt. And you may not believe it, but he does actually have a two ball joints. One here and here. Just like Jason and Freddy. But he can't activate well because of how big his sweater is. But it is there. I have seen it. I pulled this guy apart completely. Using the hot water technique. Also, if you do, do it. Decide to do it. Untie and remove this first. Because this will just get soaking wet and it takes forever to dry. I did it while I was there. <laughs> then we come to the tail end of my collection. This is pretty much the end of it, like, until they release the Ultimate Scarface, which I'm so fucking excited for. I have Predator Concrete Jungle on my Xbox and my PlayStation. So I used to have PlayStation 2, still have it, but I want it on my Xbox so I can play it more. And I love the Scarface figure. I love Scarface in the game. It was, it's a holy grail to me once I get that. Benji, will you stop digging your paws into me? Honestly, he's pushing his paw out like that into my back. So we're going to look at all three of these guys. Now, they all have parts glued in place as, um, you know, I had to because, well, these, these parts just did not want to cooperate and they kept on falling off. So here is Chopper. 
Now, what's glued into him is his backpack and these two skulls. You can probably see the white muck there, which is glue. The uh, plasma caster does detach, um, and he does have an opening computer. Unfortunately, it is broke here, but it still works on a metal rod. So that's pretty cool. He never uses it in a movie, however. And my biggest problem with this guy is his closed fists. He has a lot of accessories, but he can't use all of them. He has a spear, a retracted spear, and he also has this disc, a shuriken, and he also has this uh, ceremonial knife, which stores on a sheath. Oh, I just realised mine has a paint defect. Oh dear. Um, is that... No. Uh... <laughs> Okay, that's a bit weird. I never noticed that before. He has an unpainted sheath. <laughs> that's kind of weird. Um, but still, his spear, his dagger stores in there, and you're mainly going to be using that with it because he can't hold it. He's got closed fists, which I hate. That's the only thing I hate about this guy. <laughs> he can swap these out for attractive versions, and he comes with the smallest pair of blades. His gauntlets are very, very finicky. They're a bit annoying to move around, but they're good, though. Next we have is Celtic, and he is good. In fact, him and Scar, I had a bit of a problem. I bought them both from the same shop, and both the upper joints on their elbow were stiff, and they were glued in place. So a Celtic, I actually had to soak them in boiling water. It's not bleached him, because Neko have improved their paint techniques, and I had to completely disassemble it. I managed to put it back together all right, but, you know, it was just a bit of a thing. It's not a problem, though. It still articulates, but we're going to demonstrate that with Scar. <laughs> so here is Celtic. Now, just like um, Chopper, which I didn't show on him, I actually also glued the little wires into their backpack holes. So you probably can't see them too well, but they are glued in there. They are glued in there. And he comes with the short stubby cannon. Uh, and he comes with medium blades and a holder, so we can pull his dagger out. And give it to him. Him and Scar come with pretty much the same hands, they're just reversed. So, here he is with his dagger. He never really uses it in the movie. He was going to use it, but then Gridalien killed him. And unlike Chopper, but like Scar, he has a painted sheath. Thank God. Again, Chopper was ordered online. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, he has got new articulation. As you can see, he has a brand new body. They all, all these three predators from the AVP movie have a brand new body. Slight difference, differentiations between the three. Also, instead of a wrist computer, he has a net launcher. Pretty nice. Would have been nice if it come with a little uh, piece to stick out of it. Maybe a firing net. Also, they do have detachable blades, uh, so you can mix and match them. And there's a good reason for that, because, well, Scar's blades wouldn't be fitting into his gauntlet anytime soon. So, and he, and in fact, speaking of which, Celtic comes with this long spear. But both Chopper and um, Scar come with these. This is the retracted spear, and this is the... Um, Shuriken and also Celtic comes with it. Now we get on to Scar. Now him and Celtic can do one thing which Chopper can't because Chopper needs that clip for the um the um you know the uh, spear. But first, first of all, my little clip keeps falling out, so I got to glue it in. This is a pain in the bum bum. Hey, it's not Necker's fault, it's just, you know, it just happens, pieces come loose, but still, I can fix it. Now, see that little clip on his back that we just glued him, re-glued in? This, the store in there, doesn't do too well, so it will come out, <laughs> which is good. And as you can see, he comes with ridiculous blades, stupidly long blades. He is the most armoured up, he can hold his dagger in his hand, I usually have him holding it backhanded, and he uses it the most in the movie. Um, he also has the wrist computer, which is intact, completely intact. Uh, and he also has his cannon up here. Now, uh, we are going to discuss his articulation, and I'll show you what I mean by the frozen joint, but I fixed it on him too, with boiling water. So he has a ball joint at the head. Now, his dreadlocks are extra, extra bulky. Unlike the others. And the cannon is extra ex The backpack is extra freaking big. So what does that equal to? A very hindered head joint, more or less. His pit arms are on pin and socket shoulders, which is a double pin and socket because of the biceps. So they can go forward and back. 
they can go out to the side, they have rotation at the bicep, and they have the new, which is feckin' fantastic, double jointed elbow. Now, see this joint right here, this joint, this, this double joint bit here, this joint right here, the upper one, um, actually froze completely so it couldn't move i had to unfreeze it it wasn't easy he also has a gauntlet rotation and a ball joint at the wrist he has two ball joints in the torso he has a diaphragm joint and he has the up lower torso ball joint so the result is bending far back not so much forward more tilting than anything else and rotating but that's nice. Uh, he has pin and socket legs, forward and back, out to the side, cut joint the upper thigh, rotation at the knee, a ratcheted knee, which is double jointed. That's good. That, that's good. They've finally got the new double joints. And a ball joint at the foot. And his articulation is the best. Now, these figures feel very premium. The ultimate figures were good. But these new AVP figures feel really, really premium. They're very, very nice and sturdy. You're not going to have much of a problem with them. They feel really good. The paint job is top-notch as well. Everything's top-notch. The sculpt has always been top-notch. Also, his cannon can slide up. It has a hinge here and a hinge here. And it can also rotate on this hinge. And the cannon itself can rotate. So that results in some pretty cool cannon poses. Which isn't too bad. And of course he has the med kit there. <laughs> and we'll just stick his blades in. And that's the thing you see. That's why I want to show you all these figures. Because this is my old collection of NECA. But I love NECA. They do everything right. Uh, they do everything right. You probably saw my rant video about Mezco. Uh, I'm glad that NECA's got this license. Because. I just don't think Mezco would do that good of a job. Personally. I don't, I'm not a big fan of Mezco that much. Got some dust on things. Mezco would not do the best of jobs. I do prefer NECA by far. They are my favourite company. <laughs> Imagine if they had every single licence in the world. They'd be overstretched, but they'd do a fucking good job with everything. Uh, they would. Uh, I'm glad they've got the AVP licence. So they really do a good job with that. Uh, but still, you know. Again, now, a bit of a story about their customer service. Uh, watch this from up to bottom. So, um, he bought a, 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 a an Elder figure when it first came out. The original one, the original Mark one. It broke. He contacted NECA, said he was going to buy his own replacement, but NECA insisted on sending him a replacement. They said they'd send him one. Up to bottom said it's fine, he's going to buy one anyway. They said, okay, we'll still send you a replacement. So that's good. He, the second one he bought broke as well. So he thought, stuff it. Wait till the third replacement, and when the replacement came from NECA, it actually was the best. So, NECA do care about their customers. They do respond on Twitter. They do really good licenses. I don't even think they like Alien vs. Predator, the movie, yet they did a fucking good job with these figures. They're the best so far. They do their video game figures. They do amazing. Also, for some reason, my lower board joint is very stiff. Uh, but still, they do a really good job with what they do, and it's fantastic that NECA has this license. That's what I think is great about NECA. They do everything right. Yes, I have a doberman. See what I mean? He sticks his paws in my back. Benji, stop it. But still, that's what I like about NECA. They do everything right. You know, and this is pretty much my whole NECA collection. Excuse the Dr. Sonic screwdriver. That's not from NECA. We'll pop Wolf back now. I think his glue has dried. Does this, does this blade still move? There we go. Yep, the glue just froze it a little bit, so we'll just break that. See, this is my whole NECA collection. I'm planning on increasing it. And the ult and guess what? The ultimate Gypsy Danger figure has an LED chest. You only see that in the big figures. And Gypsy Danger is about this big. Eight inches roughly. He's about the um the ultimate. Oh god man, I got some mine. He's the ultimate he's the uh, Gypsy Danger 2.0 body. So I think that's really freaking cool that they are managing to fit an LED in there. I don't know how they're going to do it, but NECA, you got my full support on that one. You really do. Also, this is my kind of shelf. Uh, Hicks is... He's around somewhere. He is around somewhere. I don't know where he's run off to. 
Uh, but he, that's my kind of shelf and Hicks is, where is Hicks? Where is Hicks? Hicks, where are you? Why are you little shit? Eh, he's got enough somewhere. He's in this room, I know that, and Ripley falls on the floor because she is drunk. No, not really, so big guns, so hard to stand. But still, that has been my NECA appreciation and collection showcase. I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry if I ranted on a bit or talked too much. That's something I do because of my ADHD and my Asperger's. But still, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next video. Peace. Oh, by the way, guys, I found Hicks. Hiding with the NECA stuff. Naughty Hicks.